So you're a brand new player to Diablo Immortal and you want to know everything about factions. Well today I have my friend Echo Gaming here with us and we're going to talk about it. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening ladies and gentlemen. My name is Captain Nemo. I have my friend Echo Gaming here with us today and we're going to give you all of the details about the shadows and the immortals. I'm so excited Echo, how's it going? Ah, it's going well, Nemo. I think this is an important topic because this is confusing stuff. As a player who's played hundreds of hours of the game, it still can get confusing when you're talking about the different factions. So breaking it down here today for our beginner players, I think this is really important, going to be helpful to all of them. So thanks for having me. Of course, it's always a pleasure having you here. And remember, we're going to be talking about the Immortals right here in this video. And we just finished talking about the Shadows on Echo's channel. I'm going to link the video up top. You definitely want to make sure you go over there and check it out right after this one. Now, Nemo, I'm not a lore guy. I don't know all the story. I'm the guy that goes through the game and just wants to slay demons, but you know the story. So tell everyone the story about the Immortals. What are they? Sure. Sounds good. So the Immortals and the Shadows have an eternal battle, basically, for something called the Eternal Crown. Back in the day, there was a creator named the Edessa and she created the Eternal Crown. Now this Eternal Crown gives you power, power to basically protect Sanctuary. And the Edessa had a son and a daughter, Kion and Akiba. So she entrusted that crown to Kion, who basically was in charge of, like I said, protecting Sanctuary against demons in hell itself. So he created his army, the 500 Immortals, and himself were able to basically do this. Now Akiba was was part of the shadows. In fact, her job was to make sure that Kion never slipped up. You see, because Diadesta said that she never really trusted anyone with the full ultimate power of the Eternal Crown. So she basically told her daughter to be create a, a, a faction called the Shadows, who are basically going to act like a system of check for the Immortals. So if the Immortals ever slipped up, if the Immortals were never not worthy of the crown and weren't able to defend Sanctuary, she was going to rise up with her shadows, overtake the Immortals, take the crown, and of course become the Immortal herself in something called the Cycle of Strife. And that's what this whole thing is all about. Now, that was well told, Nemo. Now, we mentioned shadows and immortals, but we also need to mention there are adventurers in the game as well. Adventurers are players that I would consider to be some of the most casual players. They don't want to take part in any of that shadow immortal stuff, the extra stuff. They just want to grind the game, do their riffs, and participate in those types of events. You know, the 20 to 30 minute a day type player, that's totally cool. Adventures are great and probably the least grindy of all. But if you do want to be an immortal, there are some things that you want to know. Like, did you know that there can only be 500 immortals inside of a full server, which has tens or thousands of tens of thousands of people? That's a lot of players and only 500 of them at one time. And that's when there's max rain, when they've all filled in, which is not going to happen at the beginning of the game. That's not a lot of players get to experience all the stuff that we're going to be talking about today. With that being said, there are only four different ranks of immortals. And we talked about the shadow ranks in my video, but immortals, you have a member, you have the elite, you have the lieutenant, and then you have the immortal. The number one, which is the, the I don't know, what do you even say? The, the, the highest reign inside of the entire server, that would be the immortal. That would be when you have the statue, you're on the wall, you're the one with all of the fame. And if you, if you wanna become or get part of this, you're gonna have to go over to the Hall of Ascension. Now, in Westmarch, there is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of levels, there's a basement, there's up top. I'll just say it's up top, it's on the right. You'll find your way there eventually, but that's where you're gonna wanna go if you wanna become one of the immortals. I mean, Nemo, do you have uh, better directions than I just gave? Because mine were pretty vague. <laughs> I love your directions because, you know, <laughs> they you. really do, they, they, they kind of draw the picture between the shadows and the immortals. Like you said, the shadows are in the basement, and the immortals are way up top, you know, where the, the air is crisp and uh, you can, you know, watch the sunrise or the sunset through the Hall of Ascension, like you mentioned. <laughs> That's really good. And now, as far as as far as the rewards to the immortals, you also mentioned that, yeah, you, you know, you, you get some stuff. If you're the immortal himself or you're some of the lieutenants, you get the statue, you get 
I mean, it's not really a big thing, but the immortal, just the one person on that server gets the one statue. And then you have the lieutenants or more lieutenants that also get a group buff. A very small buff. Each one has a different group buff. It basically allows them for a few seconds to gain uh, uh, some stats, basically. And that's gonna, as far as the immortals, all of the immortals get also a cosmetic, right? They get wings. And depending on whether you're a member, or you're an elite, or you're uh, the immortal himself, or one of the lieutenants, you, you do get a different set of wings, I believe. They look a little bit different. Other than that, um, the rewards are also you, you get, you know, you deliver, you get basically hilts and uh, and gold delivered to you weekly. I mean, so you don't have to really do much to get those. There are some rewards right there. And of course, how do you get into the immortals? That's one of the biggest questions, right? So if you're a new player, you want to want you're wondering, like, what happens? How do you get into the immortals? Well, there's a few ways to get in. One way, of course, is to challenge the immortals. And and we talked about this in uh, in Echo's video. If you're a shadow, you can of course, execute something called the Rite of Exile and try to overtake the Immortals and become immortal yourself doing this whole cycle of strife thing. And another way, of course, of doing it is you can get invited into the Immortals. If there are some spots open, the Immortals can recruit members into their reign. Echo mentioned that, you know, they can be 500. Well, they don't actually start with 500. When the Immortals first turn to immortality, they slowly start kind of increasing their reign by doing activities in the game. And of course, taking their essential, this is what they need in order to progress their reign forward. And as they progress the reign, they can unlock more members and invite more people into the reign, eventually getting to 500. So wait one second, Nemo. You're telling me if I'm an immortal, if I earn my way to become an immortal, I fight my way there. There's empty spots. I can invite my homies, whether they're good or bad, and they can come be immortals with me just because I want them there. Correct. So that's one of the biggest problems when it comes to politics. <laughs> no one has to do anything. You just have to know the people up top to, to get in there. Yeah. It's about who you know. All right, let's get into some more. All right, Echo. So why don't we jump into some of the activities that the Immortals have? Tell me something about the Immortal dailies. Yeah, it, and this is one of the things I love most about the game. I'm a grinder. I like to grind it. I talked about it in my video. I like to upgrade stuff and, and earn my character stats so immortal dailies are kind of like the bounty boards kind of like something that the shadows have as well they are tasks that you will get they're going to be giving you essentia and these are typical like easy things that you would do in the game normally like run yourself a rift upgrade some of your gear and there's only a few of them that you could do probably because there's so many other things you need to do as an immortal the uh, the immortal dailies are a little bit lighter than you might see in some of the other factions or even lighter than the bounty boards, but they still are extra rewards you can get. It's a way to incentivize the logging in every day as an immortal. And I like that, but you have something that's a lot more in depth that is immortal focused. And this is the Keon's Ordeal, right, Nemo? Yeah, Keon's Ordeal is a super fun activity that only the immortals can participate in. In fact, actually only the immortals elite and higher and participate in this. This is what we learned when we started playing. It's one of the positives and the negatives about it. If you're a regular immortal soldier, you actually are not able to participate in this activity. It's a little bit odd, but what is it? So this this is something that you have to trigger. And when you do, you're entering a, sort of like a boss fight. In fact, there's four simultaneous boss fights and you have a, a whole bunch of immortals going in as four teams. And what they have to do is execute and kill all these four bosses in a very similar fashion in a sense because it, it, the bosses have to be killed almost at the same time because if one's killed and the others aren't they actually have more health so it becomes more difficult to kill them there's a little bit of coordination that gets involved because you have to make sure that you all show up at the same time and enter this big dungeon basically the idea here is like i said in the lore you're the immortals and you're defending right you're defending the everyone against hell and this is sort of where you were doing it so you have to start Keon's ordeal, enter it, and kill all of the monsters inside. That will give you, in turn, rewards. And of course, it'll also progress your reign more. But the way to get into Keon's ordeal, you have to pay Essentia. So you need this Essentia that, of course, is tied to the Raid the Vault activity. It's something that we talked a lot about in Echo's video. Super fun activity. So you need that in order to start Keon's ordeal. Without that, you're not going to be able to start the ordeal. And without the ordeal and beating it, you're not going to want to be able to get the rewards from it at the end, which are also kind of 
a lottery. But and they're also you're not gonna be able to progress the rain itself, get more immortals, get stronger, get bigger buff. This whole entire thing basically revolves around this Keon's ordeal that you need to execute, but it's for immortal elites for hire. That is not confusing at all, Nemo. Thank you so, so much. I'm telling you, this stuff is in depth. But now, Nemo did talk about the vault and raiding the vault, which is the shadow activity, but we have the immortal vault. And this is their side because while the shadows are trying to raid the immortal vault or steal Essentia from the vault, which is what essentially is gonna allow the immortals to get their legendary weapons and gear and rewards at the end, when the bell is rung, when they hear that ding because the uh, the shadows are invading, are attacking, are raiding, it's the immortal's job to turn that PvE experience that the shadows are having into a PvP one. The immortals need to come and protect their vault, protect their essentia, which is vital to them actually having all of the rewards that they'll get from being an immortal inside of that vault. So it's a nice PvP activity and uh, you, you basically have to defend your loot. That's really what it is. This is one that's played on both sides, but you have a different focus if you're a shadow or if you're a mortal. But there's one more uh, event, Nemo, and that is the Rite of Exile. That's right, the ultimate fight for immortality, because that's really what it is. If, if, you, if you anger enough shadows, if you piss them off and they will go against you, all right, and they trigger this Rite of Exile, this is basically a timer. A timer that counts down to Sunday, and on Sunday, this Rite of Exile starts. It's a whole bunch of activities, and of course, the last one being this big fight. So if you're the Immortals, you have to start preparing, and 80 of you have to go into battle. In fact, the Immortal himself and his captains, or they, I'm sorry, their captains, will be able to assign specific players, eight players. Actually, there's, uh, there's 10 players and eight teams of them. So there's 80 total, eight v eight, and there's 10 teams. So they have to assign those 10 teams to immortal reigns, basically one through 10. And those are the folks that are going to be going up and fighting against those 80 shadows. And you have to make sure as the immortal or the immortal team, the leadership team, that you win more of these fights. Because if you don't, that's when the right of exile, of course, you lose it. The cycle turns and you become not immortal anymore. And of course, the, the, the winner of the of the right takes your place. So it's a very, very important fight. It gets triggered automatically if enough dark clans get together and decide to, to take you out, so to speak. So that's kind of what, what happens there. They all come together. They want that spot. They want to be the immortal. So they come to fight for it and you have to defend it, essentially. And some of the pros for the immortals. I'll start with this, Echo. Some of the pros are, for example, you get weekly hilt and gold and gear delivered to you if you can keep them in the vault. That is, Echo just talked about the vault. So if you can defend it, you will get your weekly gold, you'll get your hilt. Also, there's some possible rewards that you can get from Keon's ordeal. Again, this is something that's almost like a lottery at the end because you're not guaranteed the rewards. Even if you beat Keon's ordeal, those legendary great rewards that are mentioned, that's sort of like a lottery and you have a chance of getting a reward possibly at the end if you make it. So those are some of the positives. Now, Echo, can you give us some more? It's all about status, man. Being an immortal is about having status on the server. You get yourself a statue if you are the number one, if you are the immortal. It's literally a statue inside of the game that everyone can see. You uh, you get your, your name is listed in the server history. Really cool stuff if you are that immortal. You get the different cosmetics, the special stuff. So when you're running around, you have that, you know, that elite look. So people know that you are, you know, one of the immortals. So it's really, uh, it's, I don't want to say it's a popularity contest, but at the end of the day, you have a status on you that you're one of the immortals. You're one of the stronger players in the game. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it kind of is a popularity thing. But you know what's funny is, I can't think of any more pros, Nemo. I am not convinced that being the immortal is the best thing. And I, I'm, I'm looking here and we have a bit of a list of some cons. Let, let me start off. Um, one of them that I don't like is that you can only have 500 out of an entire server. Let's say 40,000 players in a server. Only 500 at a time are going to be able to experience that element of the game, the different things that you could partake in as an immortal inside of the game. So building the game out 
with all of these immortal features, with such a small audience of people that could participate in them, it's it kind of stinks in my opinion, because there's some cool stuff you could do as an immortal. So yeah, 500 people, it just seems like such a small amount. Yeah, you know, and, and just for a reference sense, you mentioned 500 immortals, there could be tens of thousands of players on the server. So there could be 30,000, 40,000, 100,000 players on the server, and only 500 of them can be this immortal uh, a beautiful thing that you know ascension hall and all that great stuff that not many will be able to see so i agree with you there you know i'll follow up with the my one of my cons for immortality I, we do have a lot but one of my cons is the whole idea of you actually get a worse faction buff right so you you don't get a group buff even to start with so when you start in the moral you get zero and then you can achieve i believe 14 is the highest not even half as much as the shadows can so in general, that's not really a good positive. So I would consider that to be actually one of the worst things about being an immortal is you'll never be as strong as a shadow. Well, I have something worse, Nemo. Um, I'm gonna, let me start with a light one. And that is the immortal dailies. They're pretty basic. They're doing things you would normally do. They're not any extra fun. Like you may get some extra fun out of things that you could do as a shadow. But what I think is the worst is the politics and the drama that comes along with the Immortals. Now, I played a lot of a game in the past that's called Rise of Kingdoms, and that game was filled with politics and drama. And for me as a player, it's something I don't enjoy. I don't wanna have to deal with politics. I don't wanna have to deal with drama when I'm playing a game for fun, right? It's just, and, and I play a game for fun and make content on a YouTube channel. So it's like fun and business at the same time, but I don't like the drama. Some people may be into that. Some people may love the politics element of it and they may really enjoy that. That's great. But for me, I really don't wanna have to deal with any of that when I'm playing a game. So I am gonna probably avoid being an immortal for that reason alone. But you even have more Nemo? Uh, are there more? <laughs> well, yes, there, there, are, there are a few. So one of the biggest, things besides you know besides the whole politics is actually the idea of having lots of coordination if you talk about cans ordeal right you, you need 48 players to show up at the same time all because it's a 48 player right for everybody to get on at the same time and actually go in and execute this this is going to be a lot of work and in general that's what immortality seems like it is to me it's a lot of work it's work, 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 and you're working for the rain. You're working for someone else. You're working for the immortal and their four lieutenants. Even in, you could, if you're a soldier for the immortals, you don't even get the right to participate in Chaos Ordeal. So there goes those rewards. You're most likely not gonna get any rewards from the from the vault because there's gonna be a hundred thousand shadows trying to get to it. That's very difficult to get to. And when and when you don't, right, you have to be an elite or higher, really, because the way kind of the immortal works, if you are the immortals, if you keep the, the ascension, you keep the gear at the end of the week, basically, you have a chance to select three pieces of gear and the immortal and their, their captains are the ones that get to decide whether you actually get that gear or somebody else gets to pick it. There's a whole favoritism system that gets involved, even with the rewards when it comes to the raid the vault activities. And on top of that, the Keon's ordeal, you can't get in unless you're an elite or higher. And even if you do get in, if you're an elite, you don't actually, it's a lottery whether you get any kind of rewards from it, whether you get the legendary gear or not. So really there's not too many positives. If you really think about it, you have the cosmetics, right? Like Echo mentioned, you have the big statue for the one immortal the log that you get put into for the immortal and just the four captains so it reminds me it really if you think about this this is five people that are controlling this army of 500 others who are just doing all of the work so let me ask you a question why would you want to be an immortal if you're gonna just be working for five other people and at the end of the day even if you do all of this stuff you 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 you, you do the essential you actually get to participate in keon's ordeal if the shadows don't destroy the vault you need the essential, remember, to actually start Keon's ordeal. So, if all of that stuff comes together, I mean, what is the what is the purpose here? Now, if you're doing it because you want to do it for the cause and you want to protect the sanctuary and you want to do it, you know, for the hell and all that good stuff, for sure. But if you're doing it for a statue and, you know, to kind of feed your own ego and to start politics and drama, I don't see a reason why the other people in the Immortals would want to be immortal. You don't get the buff, you don't get the, the rewards, and you get to work and be someone else's foot soldier. So to me, that's a pretty big con. 
Now, I think Nemo, when you think of Diablo as a whole, a lot of it has to do with leaderboards. People want to be seen, right? They want to be known as one of the strongest players in, in Diablo 3. This is another way that you can be seen. Obviously, you could have your challenge rifts, you could be seen on the leaderboards, and, and you could have that presence. I think that the immortals and being an immortal or one of the, you know, one of the lieutenants is a great way to really show your your dominance or your your presence is a better word your presence inside of the game it's like the ultimate leaderboard and there are players inside of diablo that care about that i'm not personally one of them but there are people and i think that those you know four 495 foot soldiers they're people that are trying to get to that top role you know they'll play that foot soldier role but really at the end of the day they want to overtake the top immortal and be the top immortal so I think that's where it fits in. It's definitely not for all players. It's probably not for the majority of players. I think most would probably prefer to be a shadow or to be an adventurer, but you do have the people that want to be the top dogs. They want to be noticed. They want recognition. They want to get a little bit of that server fame. And that's this is here for those people. I think that's okay. A little bit for everyone. I mean, someone's going to want to be the immortal. That is true. But if you, if you do want to be the immortal, I think it should be for the right reason. If, if we go back to the lore, the whole idea is for the immortals to be protectors of the sanctuary, not to be the all-stars of the sanctuary. The whole idea, in fact, the best immortal, in my opinion, is the one that does not want to do it. It's like being a president, you know, like the best one is going to be the person that does not want to do it. The one that's for the people and not for themselves and just a statue. That's where I feel like the lore breaks away from the execution. You, you, you have a beautiful story and the whole idea of it, but at the end of the day, it's never going to be about that. It's going to be, like you said, about the leaderboard, about the popularity contest, and about who, you know, wants that statue, that single one statue that's heading over there by the Ascension Hall. I was never the most popular kid, Nemo, and I don't need to be the most popular immortal either, so I'm all right hanging out as a shadow. And from what it sounds like, I don't believe you're going to be running it being an immortal yourself. No, no, I'm going to be Shadow for life, 100%. I think that's a way better. Uh, it's, it's just, it makes more sense. You just, it's better. All right, Echo. So we we broke down the Immortals to, to the T, man. Almost as, as good as we did over there on your channel with the Shadows, which is something that I want to mention to everybody. This whole thing is a serious. In fact, we have tons of other videos for beginners, all kinds of videos that I made with Echo. And the part two of this one, the Shadows, is going to be on his channel. I'm going to link it up top. You definitely want to make sure you come visit. You also want to make sure you come join our clan family. Echo, do you want to tell everybody about, about the Scrappy Echoes? I do. Nemo and I created our own clan family that everyone is invited to. It's in the form of a Discord server that is exclusively for Diablo Immortal. For you guys to play with us, be part of our clan families. It's international and literally everyone can join. Just one week ago when Nemo and I started this series, we had approximately 300 members in just a few videos and people noticing what we were doing. We have over a thousand, it's growing quickly, but there is still space for you guys. And we want you to be there. We right now are the strongest clan family inside of the game. We wanna maintain that, so come play with us. Come be part of the clan family. Nemo's going to be linking it down below in the dis the Discord. Just come through. It's a great group of people. All right, Echo. Thanks so much for coming to the channel, you know, hanging out with me and the entire fam. I really appreciate you being here. It's always a pleasure, man. Anytime that I can get onto your channel and hang out with your people over here, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.